Okay, let's talk about developing a rhythmic vocabulary. We're going to take a measure of time in 4-4 four, four meter. That's four counts to the measure, and the quarter note gets the count. Just know that each note is one-fourth of the measure. That's what the quarter note is. So here's our measure of time. And if you saw these as notes, they would look like this, like a note had with a stem on it. And each of these takes up one-fourth of the measure. And we would count that one, two, three, four. That's if we actually played the quarter notes. That's what they would look like. So this would be possibly a four pulse measure. Bass drum, bass drum, bass drum, bass drum. But it wouldn't have to be bass drums. We could have just the bass drum or the bass tone on counts one and three. And we could put some high pitched sound on two and four. And then that would be called a two pulse measure. But what we're talking about now is just playing notes, not worrying about whether they're bass tones or whether open tones or slap tones or uh, a tone on a percussion instrument or whatever. We're just talking about notes and hitting on those notes. Think of this note as lasting or ringing. It might not ring. A lot of percussion instruments don't ring. If we held that down on the drum, we muted it, it wouldn't ring, but it would still in our mind last for that amount of time, whatever that time is. The amount of time that a note lasts really depends on tempo. If we have a very slow tempo, the amount of time in here could be really long. Very fast tempo, this is going to go by really quickly. So tempo is what really tells us how long this measure is and then how long the notes are in that measure. Now, these are the beats, the counts, four counts in a measure, four beats in a measure. We not, might not actually play those beats. We may just count them. So you should know what the quarter note count is. But we can also divide this up. I should say subdivide because we've already divided the measure up into four pieces. So those are really the divisions of the measure. Anything in here is really the subdivision of the beat or the count. So if we add one more note in there or one more count, we exactly between the counts or the beats, that would be the and. It's exactly in between. And this is what's what we call the off beat. It is off beat. It's exactly in between the beats. It is an off beat. But that's usually what we call the off beat. The ands. Some people call it the up beat. Because if you accent these ands, make them prominent in the music, you get the feeling that you're lifting up between the beats. That the, the ands become dominant, it gives you a very upbeat feeling. Just like you watch a person uh, walking, if they have a lot of spring in their step, they're lifting up between their steps. Well, the steps are the beats, and they're lifting up between their steps, so they're, they're said to be very upbeat in their step. They have an upbeat personality, maybe. So that's what those are. So there's eight of them here, so we call those eighth notes. These are quarter notes, or quarter note counts. These are eighth note counts. Again, we don't have to play them all, but we can count them to better understand the passage of time. It's like counting when I say, tell me when a minute's up. Well, you don't really know when a minute's up unless you count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Those would be like maybe counting the numbers. Okay, so 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. 
you get pretty close to telling me when a measure is up. Well, you get even more closer, or you get even closer if you count the ands between the numbers, because it's helping you order your thoughts more precisely. Your, the passage of time is more accurately being measured in your mind. So this sound, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, a lot of times this is what a shaker will be playing to give it more momentum, to lock in the time for people, to give it a busier feeling, right? More notes, make it feel more, make it feel busier. It gives it a thicker texture, whereas less notes, more open textured, but it's easier to, to drag. It's easier to drag the tempo. This is harder to drag the tempo, but hey, more notes, you tend to start speeding up. It tends to give the illusion that you're speeding up. Even though you're not, it gives the illusion that you're speeding up. And it can fake a lot of people out to thinking that we are speeding up. And indeed, you know, uh, a novice uh, or beginner will often get carried away with the excitement of playing eighth notes and they'll actually start speeding up. That means the time between the numbers is actually getting less and less and, and, and the tempo actually is being sped up. We call that rushing. But you can divide the space that is in between the one and the and and the and and the two. We can divide that again into two pieces and we call those sixteenth notes because if you add them up all together there's sixteen so each one is one sixteenth of the measure one e and a two e and again that that is even more rushing uh, of a feeling more momentum more of a buildup so you tend to do these rhythms when you want to create energy, when you want to keep the music from lagging, help speed up the tempo a little bit, or to build up towards the end of a phrase. But rhythms are usually, in many cases, combinations of all these. And this is music that has a very straight feel. Everything's in com combinations of two or four subdivisions of the beat. And this is very straight music. Most of the music that you hear in Western uh, rock and roll, um, marches, um, a lot of this is very straight. When we get into what we call swing styles, they divide the beat up into three pieces, not two pieces or four pieces. They divide the beat into three pieces. And we call those eighth note, because it's sort of like this, triplets, because there's three. And we count them a little differently, one E, uh, but don't confuse, these E's are not lined up and neither are those us. They're slightly off. So this feel of three notes in a beat, it's a triplet feel. And it's a characteristic of rhythm and blues, uh, blues, jazz, African music, a triplet feel. Um, the term for those types of rhythm is ternary, ternary rhythms, based on three. Rhythms that are based on twos and fours, those are binary rhythms. Um, so that's the difference. Straight versus swung. If you went to six, you'd be one E, E, and. The and does line up. The and is an and is an and. So that's why we call it the offbeat. And now we have one E, E, and a, uh, a, uh, two E, E, and a, uh, a, uh, three, and it just goes on and on. So we call these 16th note triplets because of those, that, those patterns of three, patterns of three. The eighth note is now being broken into three.